My name is Avraham Bronstein. I serve as rabbi of the Hampton Synagogue in West Hampton Beach, New York, and I'm honored to share the first Devar Torah of this new cycle, Tuf Shin Pebet. On its surface, the story of Cain and Hevel is fairly simple, and in fact, Sefer Bereshit describes the crime in a single pasuk. Vayomer Cain al Hevel achiv vayhib yotem hasadeh vayakam Cain al Hevel achiv vayahargeyu. Cain said to Hevel his brother, and it was when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Hevel his brother and killed him. Bereshit perek dalad pasuk chet. It seems clear that Cain is the bad guy, the criminal. Hevel is the good guy, the victim. But Chazal in the Midrash radically reread two key elements of this Pasuk and completely undermine this simple understanding of the episode. For Chazal, the story is less a historical event, it's more a meditation on the human experience. Point number one the biblical account implies, though it never explicitly states, that Cain murdered his brother in a fit of jealous anger after his sacrifice was rejected and Hevel's was accepted. Chazal, though, focus on the lacuna at the beginning of that key verse. What did Cain say to Hevel? And they offer several creative suggestions. One asserts that they were negotiating the division of the world between them. One brother claimed all of the land in the world, and the other all of the metaltalin, all the movable goods upon it. Then one claimed the land the other was standing upon, and the other claimed the clothing the first was wearing. Violence ensued. A second opinion in the Midrash felt that Cain and Hevel could have agreed on how to divide the world physically, but each claimed the right to have the Beit HaMikdash built in their half. Again, violence ensued. A third opinion felt that they were fighting over women, specifically the twin sisters they were born with, to enable the population of the world. In other words, Chazal understand the story of Cain and Hevel in terms of conflict more generally. They ask, what makes people fight? And they answered, people fight over possessions, over religion, or over love and romance. In other words, the story of Cain and Hevel for Chazal is a paradigm that continues to play itself out. Significantly, in the biblical account of the story, Cain is an unjustified aggressor. Hevel is the innocent victim. Cain has no reason to direct force against Hevel, who never does anything, who never even says anything to Cain in the course of the narrative. But in Chazal's retelling, neither Cain nor Hevel is any more right or wrong than the other. They each make claims against the other that are irreconcilable. Point number two, the phrase, and Cain rose up, Vayakam Cain. The plain meaning of this text is that Cain pounced upon a hapless, passive Hevel. But Chazal completely changed the sense of the words, and they explain in the Midrash that if Cain rose up against Hevel, he must have been down before him earlier in the episode. In other words, Cain was losing the fight until he managed to fight back and turn the tide. Cain may have killed Hevel, but maybe in the end he did it in self-defense. In the conclusion of the story, God confronts Cain, who admits his guilt. Chazal are teaching us here that even if Hevel was not blameless as their argument descended into physical violence, Cain was ultimately held responsible for responding as he did with deadly force. Perhaps living with unresolvable conflict, even one that could be violent, is better than that kind of terrible final resolution. Maybe Cain should have backed down, even to the point of giving Hevel more of what he wanted, if that was the only way to avoid escalating and having to kill him. Alternatively, maybe Cain had done everything he needed to do, even if he now had to live the rest of his life with the awful consequences of that decisive action. Ultimately, Chazal don't give us the alternate reality in which Cain and Hevel peaceably resolve their differences. Because in the world, there's always something to fight over. 
and the tendency towards conflict seems hardwired into the human experience. Kinds and Hevels are always tensely walking together onto the battlefield, all around the world and throughout recorded history. Given this reality, Chazal's rereading of the story teaches us not to judge right and wrong by the terrible moment when violence finally breaks out, but to see where both sides contributed to an atmosphere that made the violence inevitable. To paraphrase Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, only one side is guilty, but ultimately both sides are responsible. Shabbat Shalom.